My name is Jessica Munoz. I have been at Sinai for three years. I am currently the intern unit manager and renal dialysis for outpatient. In dialysis, our main focus is pretty much giving life-sustaining care to the patients. Um, we remove excess fluid that they're no, uh, their body can no longer get rid of, and we also clean their body, uh, their blood of toxins that their body can no longer get rid of. So on a daily basis, we run patients from about four in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, and we run them for about three to four hours, and we try to make it as painless as possible for them. Making sure that they're receiving the best care they can get here and to make sure that they walk on and off the unit the exact same way they came, which is alive and healthy, relatively speaking. It's pretty much the same setup as it is across the street. Uh, from a, At Franco, we only had 11 chairs. At Iron Commons, we can go up to 18. We're slowly ramping up the patient load um, as we increase the patient load, the staff load, everything's gonna go up. So we have all brand new machines, a brand new water system, a whole set of 18 chairs, brand new computers. Everything is state of the art where at Franco, we were confined to the 1900s. <laughs> and here, everybody is amazed that they're getting this care because I don't think they thought this day was actually ever going to come. Everything is working the way it's supposed to, which is a huge help. So you're not having delay in care. You're not having delays in making sure supplies are here. You're not having all these delays that sometimes we were restricted with across the street. Um, a lot of it too is the patients don't like that it's cold, but in most medical facilities, they're on the cooler side. That helps prolong the um, longevity of the machines themselves, but it also helps reduce the risk of infection for the patients, which is huge. Um, the old facility, we were hampered with only having wall unit or window units for the AC, so sometimes the unit would get overly hot. Now. I get more complaints that it's cold, but I get to stay off infections a lot easier, which is nice. Same thing with the space and having more, a brand new area. They're more spread out. I don't have to worry about cross-contamination. We have more access to hand washing and anything they would need, it's right there at their fingertips. We have each other like family. Um, I view every single patient as if they were a family member. We are a dysfunctional family because it's we're, you're coming from all walks of life and age ranges and generations, but at the end of the day, when someone's missing, someone is looking out for you. They want to know why aren't you here. They want to know if you're sick, if you're getting transplanted. They want to know all this information. For us, just this year, we have had seven transplants and we're only in June. We have number eight occurring on Monday of next week. We only had seven for all of last year. So it's a huge, huge motivation to get them to be a part of their health journey. Um, I have strived very, very hard to make the patients as independent as possible, but also still rely on each other as family. You know, this isn't a death sentence for them. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. For some people, transplant isn't it. And some people want to stay in our dysfunctional family, which is great. But I would still want them to all be as independent as possible. We all want our independence. And if I can help them grow that, I'm going to do it. But the family aspect, that's that's key because if you can't view this as your own family member and want to give the care that you would hope that you would receive or your family member receive, then this is all for a waste.